Hello, it's Steve White, Steve White's 89. Um, well, I can't believe it's been five years since the Rebel Heart Tour. Um, some friends were posting stuff on Facebook and I'm like, I was going to do something for that because I remember um, people were asking me in my comments, you should do a video about your experience when you went to see the show and when you, sit, when you went to see the Tears of a Clown show and um, I was going to and I just thought, uh, when do I do it? Like, when, It's not really relevant, it's like years ago and I thought, well, it's almost five years when it gets to the fifth year um, anniversary, you can do it. So I missed the opening night, which was last night. Um, Actually, it was Friday. Date-wise, it was Friday, but it was on the show. It was on a Saturday, so I was thinking it's Saturday, Sunday. But um, I think I'm going to commemorate the end of the tour, which is in a week or two. So I'll, I think I'll do a review of the Tears of a Clown show, the Melbourne shows, and the Sydney shows. Um, so that's like three videos, and that should I should be able to cover everything. And I've been wanting to do that for a while. I've been wanting to look back at um, past Madonna events and things. But um, those things don't get a lot of attention or views because they're not, people aren't searching for them. They're not like current or in the news. So I haven't gotten around to doing them. And it's only a few people who've asked me. I'm like, well, only a few people actually care and want to watch them. But I kind of want to tell the stories anyway. So I decided to do them. But um, I just can't believe it's been five years. Now, I waited 23 years to see Madonna. Because um, I missed the girly show, um, I was too young uh, to go to it, and as much as I carried on, um, none of the adults would take me to the show. I lived in Tasmania, and I would have had to travel to Melbourne um, and go to a concert. So no one wanted, no one wanted to do that. I had a sister who lived here, um, and yeah, it was too much hassle apparently. And um, what I kept being told at the time was. Don't worry, you can see her next time. Next time was 23 years later. So, um, yeah. But, um, fortunately, they were selling these at the newsagent, so I did get one of the tour programs at the time that I got to look at and just enjoy without actually having to actually go to the show to get it. Um, and I did manage to find, you know, the little girly show book. So, and I got the video, and I thought, well, you know what, I will see her next time. And the next time she toured was seven years later um, for the Drowned World Tour. Was it eight years later? 1993 to 2001. I think it was over seven years, nearly eight years. Um, and I thought, oh my God, she's touring. She's going to come. I just assumed she would come back. She came here last time. Why wouldn't she come back? She didn't come back. I was like, oh crap. Uh, they showed it on TV though. Um, like I got the Girlie Show DVD uh, video and I watched that to death and took it around everyone's houses and everyone saw it. Um, if you knew me, you had to have watched that. Um, and then Drown What Happened was on TV. That was sort of like a, a compensation that we got to watch it live on TV because I'd grown up with the Blonde Ambition tour on video that had been taped. It was the Barcelona concert that was um, aired live, my brother taped. So I had that, and later on I bought um, the Virgin tour and then Ciao Italia, which I hated. Um, but I loved it, the Virgin, the Virgin tour, and I can't believe there were two songs cut out of that. Um, no one, no one, no one can handle that. It's like too much. So, around what happened, I didn't get to see it. So I thought, well, um, sh maybe she'll come back for the next show. I was like a student; I couldn't afford to like travel. Um, so, I just thought she better come back. <laughs> I thought, well, oh, she didn't. Um, so. <laughs> The reinvention tour happened, and um, I loved American Life, but I didn't think it was a big commercial album. I thought it was partly because of that, that she didn't travel, um, and I wasn't as, as excited about it, even though I liked it artistically. Um, it wasn't like music or Ray of Light, um, so I wasn't that bothered, but I thought, I'll go to the next one. And then along came Confessions, and it just, the whole world was like a dance floor on fire. Everyone loved it. I, I, I couldn't believe, because I was, you know, it's just... You're a, friend, a fan of Madonna for so long, and, and all of a sudden she's like huge again, and you sort of are like, wow, it's been 20 years since her first like huge sort of um, period in like 84, 85, and now it's 20 years later, and she's still as big and, and bigger with breaking Guinness Book of Records and all this sort of stuff. Um, and then I found out she was touring and she wasn't coming to Australia, so I thought, oh, for God's sakes, I'm not missing this one. So I decided to go, I booked tickets in um, 
randomly in Chicago because that was just who was selling tickets at that moment. I bought the airfare, everything. And then she announced she was coming to Australia and I thought, you know what? Because it wasn't planned, the tickets I got weren't great. And I thought, you know what, if I wait for the Australian tour, I'll get better seats. It'll be easier. I can go to a bunch of shows. Um, so I cancelled stuff. I, I, I bit the bullet. I lost a lot of money. And then she announced that she wasn't coming to Australia. But at that point, it was too late to book anything for anywhere else in the world. And I also had lost a bunch of money. Um, so I was a bit bitter. And I said, I'm not travelling for that bitch. Um, if she comes to Australia, I will see her. I'm not travelling for her. So then, Sticking Sweet, which was okay. I love the album, but I didn't really get into that era so much. Um, but MDNA I loved, and she was supposed to come here. It was rumoured she was supposed to come here for all of them. Apparently she got really close for MDNA um, and Sticking Sweet, because Sticking Sweet had a second leg, and they were talking about adding Australia to that, but they still didn't, because, you know, whatever, they don't care about us. Um, and then um, they got to... Um, God, I've just suddenly lost the name of the album. I just said it. I'm MDNA. Um, I thought she was coming for that. I was nearly going to tour. I mean, I was nearly going to go to the tour and travel. Um, but I was in a relationship at the time, and money would spending that much money to do something like that is just it didn't happen. Um, and she, the rumor she was going to come again, it got cancelled. So I'd given up on seeing Madonna, but I'd always had a Madonna fund. So if she ever came. I'd have money and I could just buy really great seats and really great tickets and everything. Um, and it was always like separate from any other money. It never got touched. Um, and I started to spend into it because I thought, she's not coming. <laughs> not coming. Um, then the Rebel Heart album came out. I liked it. It was good. Um, and there was rumours she was going to tour. And at this point, I was just numb to the whole thing. Um, Post-traumatic non-tour stress or something. I don't know. And then the rumors started to get really loud. I'm like, oh, crap, how much money do I have in that account now? And I looked, and I'm like, oh, God. Um, and then it happened. Um, I managed to get in because I still had my icon status, all that crap. Um, and surprisingly, the first seat I got in Melbourne, she was opening in Melbourne, was the exact seat I wanted, right in front of the heart stage. Because I originally had always envisioned I would get a seat up the front, the front row, VIP, do the whole thing like that, and just go to one show and just do it really big. And then I'm like, no, you're going to have to go to, you can't just knock, it can't be Madonna on in Melbourne, you're not there, you have to go to all the shows, however many she does, just go to them, just make one the big good seat, and then the rest can just be like up the back, it doesn't matter, as long as you're there. Um, so, and then I looked at the actual stage and realised a runway again, and I'm like, God, I don't want to be on the side. Um, I don't want to be behind her when she's performing, so I thought, okay, I want to be there, and I just happened to just get exact centre, literally in front of the stage, first try, I'm like, thank you, Madonna Gods. Um, the second show, I wanted to be up the front, so I was a few, few rows from the front, because the first couple were the most expensive ones, I'm like, ah, I'm not going to pay that much, just to be a couple, a little bit closer, and I sort of wanted to be more in between the cross stage and the main stage, so I managed to get pretty much the seat I wanted there as well. Now, Next, she was going to Sydney, and then she was going to end in Brisbane. Now, I hate Brisbane, but it was the last show, last show of the tour, and I'm like, I want to be there because I'm pretty sure that's where they're going to film the DVD, and I want to be there for the end of the tour in case this is also her last tour, which is what a lot of people were thinking it was, um, especially with the Madonna book, which is all about the tours. Um, so yeah, I was I decided, and, and, and the seats I wanted were really good. I was really getting lucky with the seats. I kept getting the ones I wanted. Each, each time I tested, I pretty much got where I wanted. I thought, okay, I'll buy them tomorrow, because I had to wait till I got paid. And then that next day, it was announced that she was cancelling the Brisbane shows at the end of the tour and moving them to the middle of the week. So instead of being on the weekend, they were moved to the middle of the week before, in between Melbourne and Sydney, so there was Melbourne, Sydney, Saturday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then there was the Brisbane shows on like Wednesday and Thursday, and then the Sydney shows were the next week on the um, Saturday and Sunday, instead of being, you know, one weekend Melbourne, one weekend Sydney, one weekend Brisbane last. So I was really happy that they were doing Sydney at the end, because I had already bought tickets for Sydney and I wanted to go to Sydney, so, um, but I hadn't bought the best tickets though because I wasn't expecting it to be the last show I was going to spend more and get 
better seats on the other one. So I was like, oh God, what do I do? So I pretty much spent the next couple of months obsessing over getting better seats. I managed to get better seats. Um, and it was pretty amazing. Um, I was so prepared to see the show. And then she suddenly announced, I'm going to do a special concert for my Australian fans I have neglected and abused for so many decades, 23 years. So she was going to do a special fan-only show, and it was going to be like you you basically um, hashtag something and you got basically sent a ticket, basically. And it was like fan-only lottery sort of luck sort of thing. I put out a thing. I didn't get anything back because at the time my security on my um, accounts had been closed because I'd been having some problems with some people and I didn't want them going into my accounts and I forgot that I'd changed them. So no one could see it wasn't like a friend um, what I'd, what I'd um, put out. So I didn't get a ticket. And I had a bad experience with a friend that uh, had dangled some tickets in front of me that were net they were never going to give to me just to be an asshole. Um, so, and also my mother had not long been diagnosed with cancer and I was and she actually had an accident um, right the same weekend that they announced um, the tickets and I didn't get one. So it was a very bad laying in bed crying day because <laughs> I was in Sydney um, and my mum was in the hospital and I couldn't visit her because I couldn't afford to get there because um, I just travelled to Sydney and I was broke. Um, and just paid for all these tickets and I was really broke. So I was having a really bad moment, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to go anyway. I'm just going to stand out the front, I'm going to talk to the fans, and I'm going to have an experience that I can remember, even if I don't go in and see the show. So I went, and I met these super Madonna fans, the Madonna super fans. Um, I talked to all of them, they're all great, they're all nice. I just immediately, it was just like a real family, um, except for a couple of them that absolutely hated me, the rest liked me. Um, <laughs> And I hung around, and eventually I magically managed to just get in. I won't say how. I'll leave that for the video about um, the actual Teaser Clown show. I went in, and it was great. But then it was like a bit of a letdown. Like, okay, I've seen Madonna now. And, like, I was prepared for the show on the weekend. Now it's like I had this Wednesday um, little theatre Madonna experience. It was really weird. Um, it was, like, exciting, but it was also, like, I've kind of done it now. It's like, I've seen Madonna. So the whole, the first concert, you know, in Melbourne, it's like, it was sort of like, okay, so I had to then re-pump myself up for that. So I went to that. I saw the people I knew. They were all up the front in front of the heart stage right where I was. Um, and I managed to get basically behind, basically behind um, the two people on either side of the tip of the heart stage. And I was behind them. So I was direct centre in the front next to Molly Meldrum, who was, um, I was seated next to, and um, Kylie would have been in my seat had she shown up, so thank God she didn't, because I wouldn't have had that seat. Um, I had a friend who lost his seat to Molly and got pushed a few seats back, which um, I still can't believe he, he, he is living, that he managed to live through that, having the seat that I had and basically losing it um, because of Molly Meldrum, because um, in some ways he's a more obsessed fan than me. So the show happened, and it was amazing. I was literally just screaming when, when she came down. I was just so excited. Um, the show was great. Um, she did miss the middle, the, the medley section. The second show, I went down the front. I could have come back up um, for the heart stage sections, but it was a bit of a hassle. And I thought, you know, your other two tickets are heart stage. Just stay where you are. Enjoy this sort of view because you're not going to see the show from this view again. Because the other Brisbane tickets were going to be um, in between the heart stage and the... Um, the hut stage and the um, um, the cross stage. So I was going to cover the front, middle and end for all um, the six shows because she only did six shows in Australia. But I um, didn't end up going to Brisbane because I was going to go to Brisbane because of the end and do Sydney because I just wanted to go to Sydney. So I had, and Sydney was going to be the middle and Brisbane was going to be up the front for the end. Um, I mean, heart stage up the front, heart stage for the end. So I went to that. I sat through everyone going to the Brisbane shows and the drama where she pulled the girl's shirt down and showed a nipple and all this stuff. Um, my, one of my friends got to be an unapologetic bitch. Um, so I missed all that and it was a bit hard, but um, I didn't want to go to Brisbane. They didn't have the seats I wanted. Um, once they moved to Brisbane, everything changed. And I just thought, I'm just going to go to the first show, last show and skip the middle. I sort of regret it a little bit, but um, 
also I had more money to buy better tickets for Sydney so that was the other um, thing so then I went to Sydney um, I got invited to um, the gym workout thing with her personal trainers and that and I just saw a lot of the fans um, around and went to the final shows she did the medley I got up front both times um, on the other side of the heart stage from where I was the first night where I was center I was up on the side and eventually I got on I got on the um, the, um, the, um, the barrier all three nights I had the heart stage tickets um, and I watched it it was amazing I'd always wanted to see Madonna and I'd always imagined at least she'd do holiday and that would be the last show and the show would end like that like um, Girly Show did um, and that's what happened and I got to be on the barrier three times for that and it was all a big dream come true and there were lots of little stories and I do want to do videos on them because it's just fun to talk about but I just wanted to do a little commemorative video for the fifth anniversary of the Rebel Heart Tour which like I said was 23 years of waiting for us Australian Madonna fans it was not fun um, but the amazing thing was when she finally came, everyone did get excited. It was like all was forgiven, and there were Madonna parties and Madonna bars, and um, everyone was talking about. It. Everyone I know went to the concerts. Like every, per almost every person I know went to the concerts, and I had friends who were there during the show who got. She spoke to them, and um, people I knew were unapologetic bitches. And then I met some unapologetic bitches and made friends with them. It was just a great experience. It was the first time my life experiencing the Madonna fan community because I'd always been the lone Madonna fan anywhere I was and then all of a sudden I was surrounded by these other people who loved her as much as me and was as, as obsessed as me um, and you know like I said if she came here I would see her she came and I saw her and I was planning to go to um, Madame X and then things started to go wrong I, I, I stepped back I said I'm not doing it and I just sat back and watched the train wreck unfold and I really consider Rebel Heart to be Madonna's final tour. It's a, a final world tour, real world tour, stadium tour, and I really consider Madame X just be like a promotional tour, fiat theatre tour, sort of um, best to be forgotten, maybe. I don't know. But I'm going to go. If you're free to share, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. I can't believe I talked this long about that, but I just, I just can't believe it's been five years, and I just wanted to, like, do something about it even if it's not hugely exciting or anything, there's no news or anything. Um, it was a dream come true. I'd always wanted to see her and I finally got to and I got, my dream was to be up front, to see Madonna and she ended the show with Holiday, just like I always imagined. So it was great and seeing her at the Tears of the Clown show, um, which was the only one at that time she'd done, it was very special. It was all pretty amazing. Um, I'm going to go. Thanks.